Hi and welcome to our next podcast on medical statistics. Today we're going to look at funnel plots. And we're going to start by uh, revisiting the idea of random error and precision because these, these concepts help motivate our discussion of funnel plots. And then we'll go on to talk about funnel plots themselves, what they are, um, how to interpret them um, basically, um, and then some pointers for where you can find more information about them if you want to. Now we've talked about bias and error in a previous podcast, so if you're feeling a bit rusty on it, then perhaps now would be a good time to go back and look at that. But you'll recall that random error is error which occurs due to chance. A typical example of it is sampling error, whereby if you were to repeat a study and sample different study participants, you would get a slightly different outcome because of the random effect. Um, you might remember in the podcast that we used an example of um, arrows being uh, fired at a target and you get this random clustering um, as opposed to bias which was when you had a systematic change in what was going on. You remember as well that we've talked about the central limit theorem before and that as our sample size increases um, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution which we call the standard error um, is proportional to 1 over the square root of n. So as the sample size gets bigger um, the standard error gets smaller that is to say that the precision gets higher. So, to say it again, as the sampling size or the size of our study increases, its precision also increases, or the standard error decreases. So then, imagine that we're, um, we're going to do a study. We've got a relatively small sample size, um, and we perform it and we get this as our, our number, our outcome. If we were to repeat that study, because it's got a relatively small size, we'd expect to see a relatively large standard error. That is that the results we have would be quite spread out. So here we go, we'll repeat it a few times. We find that we get a cluster, you know, results which cluster around some value in the middle, but they're relatively spread out. Now, if we were to uh, study the same thing, but to increase uh, the size of our study or increase the number of participants, then we would expect the precision to increase um, or the, uh, the standard error or the, the variation to decrease. And so we might get something which looked a bit like this. And if we were to go on increasing and increasing and increasing the size of our study, then we would expect something like this to happen. Now, um, you can see that the precision is getting bigger as the study size gets bigger and it's approximating to some kind of um, true value, which is, I don't know, but maybe this blue line here. And if you wanted to, you could draw some nice lines around that, which would make it look like you could call it a pyramid, or maybe you'd call it a funnel. So that would be a funnel plot. So funnel plots, they're typically used in meta-analysis. And the reason that they're used is to try and see whether there's been any uh, bias in the inclusion of the studies into the meta-analysis, or um, within the studies themselves. The idea is if you do that plot that we did before, so you put um, studies with a larger standard error down at the bottom, uh, you put studies with a, a higher precision, smaller standard error up at the top, um, and then on the x-axis here we're plotting the actual result of the study, then you can see if we draw those lines on here that something's gone wrong. We've lost that nice symmetrical funnel shape and there seems to have been a skew. Um, there was, looks like there were some studies missing. There should be some studies down on the, the bottom left or on the, the left side of that funnel. Um, and that might suggest that there's some kind of inherent bias going on. We should take a minute to talk about what the axes of the funnel plot are. We talked when we uh, constructed the plot at the start of this podcast, how we were plotting more precise studies towards the top of the chart. That is those with a smaller standard error towards the top of the chart. And so on the y-axis, we'd have standard error. And the smaller standard errors are going to go towards the top. So the axis will run from zero at the top to another number at the bottom. In this case, I put in 2.5. But that number will vary depending on what the precision of the smallest or the least precise studies in the meta-analysis are. And on the x-axis, we've got some kind of measure of effect. And typically, um, you would see odds ratio there, and it's often expressed um, as a log scale, not a linear scale. 
And that just means that the, the funnel plot, when things are working nicely, will come out as symmetric. And the other thing that's often put on if you're using an odds ratio scale is the odds ratio of one. As you'll remember from our podcast on odds ratios, an odds ratio of one means that your intervention doesn't make any difference in, in your trial. And so if we look at this funnel plot, we can see it looks asymmetric and it looks like there should be some more studies or some more points uh, to the left of that odds ratio of one. So we would be a bit suspicious there as to why we're not seeing these studies which have shown a smaller effect. And that's the whole idea of the funnel plot, to draw our attention to that effect. So if we find asymmetry in our funnel plot, then the obvious question is to ask why. Now, there are loads of causes of asymmetry in a funnel plot. Um, I've put a link at the bottom of this slide um, to an article on the BMJ about funnel plots. Um, it is more in depth than this podcast is, um, and it's very good. If you're interested or if you think you want to know more about it after after seeing this podcast and that would be a great place to start. So the thing which funnel plots are often used to try to infer is a reporting bias or a, a publication bias um, and that is to say that um, it's to look or to try to find out whether studies which are showing a less favourable effect are not being published and if that were the case then certainly that would be one cause um, of a skew or an asymmetric funnel plot. It could be that the you know the less favourable publications are being delayed. It could be that um, uh, studies which don't show as positive an outcome are being uh, published in foreign language journals and so aren't being included in the meta-analysis. Or sometimes it could be that the really favourable studies are being published in multiple locations. And any of these things would lead to to a bias and an asymmetry in the funnel plot. Flawed methodology would also or can also lead to a skewed funnel plot, whether it's something to do with the study design uh, which skews the outcome measure, whether it's the way that the results are analysed, um, or hopefully not, but if, if there were fraud, if people were um, misreporting or misinterpreting or fiddling with the data, uh, then you might find that you get a skew in your funnel plot as well. Heterogeneity means that the studies are just different in some way, apart from just their size. So it could be that they're done in different populations um, or different settings. Um, it could be something to do with the methodology. So maybe a smaller study might focus on higher risk individuals, whereas the larger study doesn't. Um, and when this is the case, and if there is significant heterogeneity between the trials um, included in the meta-analysis, then this may induce an asymmetry in the funnel plot. Or it could just be due, due to chance. It could just be that it, it has so happened that when the studies have been carried out, um, there tends to have been more favourable outcomes or less favourable outcomes. Um, and that's just the, the nature of things. And occasionally, uh, the random nature of the way that randomised trials are done will mean that an asymmetry occurs. So this is only meant to be an introduction to formal plots. Uh, but I hope that we've managed to um, introduce them and motivate where they come from. Uh, we've talked about causes of asymmetry and I think it's important because often when you look at a funnel plot in a meta-analysis the assumption is that if there is asymmetry then it's because of publication bias. That's not always the case and I hope that by going through some of the different causes of asymmetry um, we have highlighted that. There's loads more that, that could be covered about funnel plots uh, as an example. Um, it's possible to do hypothesis tests on, on asymmetry of formal plots, but I think that's beyond the scope of an introductory podcast. This uh, reference here is the same paper that's on the link at the bottom of the other slides, and as I say, um, it's a, a, a well-written and easy, I think at least easy-to-read paper that would be a good place to go to for more information. Thanks. Thank you for listening to another podcast brought to you by School of Surgery. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook at School of Surgery, on iTunes, on Podomatic at schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com and finally by searching School of Surgery on YouTube. Thank you very much and see you next time.